Hey everybody, it's Ripley back again. Oh, we're going to have some fun now. We're going to talk about vector functions and space curves, which sounds pretty sci-fi, but what it really is, is it's just a new way of looking at functions. Um, prior to Calc 3, we dealt with planar functions, right? And those could have two dimensions or three dimensions with a parameter laying over the top of the two dimensions. With a vector function, now we're moving into three space, or four space with a parameter. So what we're going to be talking about today is vector functions, which are four space functions. They are called vector value functions. Let me show you what I mean. So typically the notation, or at least the notation of your author, is R of T. Now this R is capitalized. i got to figure out a way to get this thing to cap out so we don't confuse that. Remember, if they're capitalized, they, they deal with vectors somehow. All right, so this, this thing can be written as f of t i plus g of t j plus h of t k. And again, remember these guys from our vector notation, those guys are always capitalized. Or easily notable and identical is f of t g of t. This is the notation that they used on the AP exam. So we've actually dealt with these. We just dealt with them in three space. Now don't, be, don't confuse three space with uh, uh, three dimensions. It's two space with the parameter t, okay? So to think about this, the domain of this is all real numbers or potentially the domain that works with these functions. Like if I've got the, if f of t is, for example, if r of t um, is equal to, and by the way, we'll get into this in, in greater detail down the road. Let's say that this was the square root of t, uh, t squared, and the cube root of t. Then clearly, can you tell that the domain of t squared is all reals, the domain of the cube root of t is all reals, but the domain of the square root of t is only positive reals and zero. So this is kind of a misnomer to say this. In this case, the domain, <coughs> excuse me, would be zero to infinity. All right, so in other words, we're somewhere on the real number line, somewhere. We've got a set of values that work. And then if I plug those in, so r of some value on the domain, so some t in the reals would then spit out f of that value, g of that value, and h of that value. So this, if you recall, the notation in, in calculus was real valued functions of a real variable. Real number goes in, remember f of x equals uh, x cubed plus two. Real number goes in here, real number gets spat out here. Well, in the case of r of t, real number goes in, let's go r of t. This is going to be a real number. And then what's get, what gets spat out is going to be f, g, and h. All right, so that's a vector valued function or just a vector function. Now, we've already played with these. We know how they work. We're not afraid of them at all. So it, um, basically what we're doing is we're just extending our knowledge. Now, I don't mean to be glib or overly simplify it, but it's not very difficult to process how these things work. So remember the first thing that we did way back in Calc 1. We talked about limits, right? Limits of functions of f of x's. Well, now we're going to talk about, this was Calc 1, Calc 1. Now we're going to talk about limits of r of t's. All right, now remember this r, this is key. This notation is going to haunt us for a good long time. So r of t equals f of t, g of t, and h of t. By the way, they work exactly the same way. If I want to take the limit as r goes to a of r, whoops, I don't know where that f came from. Oh, oh drop my pen. Don't mind this guy of r of t, of r of t, and remember, r of t just equals this, Yoop. then you can probably guess what it's going to be. It's just going to be the limit as r goes to, er, as r, oh man, I never write that, I thought I said t, but let's make it, it should be as t goes to a, of course, right, because t is the independent variable, just like in two space only we're getting a little complicated with our parameterized values. Sorry about that. This is going to be as t goes to a of f of t, comma, limit 
as t goes to a of g of t, and limit as t goes to a of h of t. Now, this is not <laughs> universally recognized mathematically, but I'm going to give you a little mnemonic device. The limit of the vector is the vector of the limits, right? So I'm just going to take the, the limits at each one of the value points. So if r of t is equal to, uh, let's go t squared, 1 over, let's go t plus 1, and sine t, probably see where this is going, something like this, then the limit as t goes to 0 of r of t is, well, what's the first rule of limits, right? Plug it in, plug it in. If all hell breaks loose, do some algebra. Look at it, tr look at a trick or remember stuff, right? So this value is going to be 0, comma 1, right? Comma 1. Remember, I can always write these at, in the i, j, k in the component notation, right? So this would be 0i, or just 0, right? Plus j plus. Okay, I'm done. That's, that is the limit of that vector. So it just means it heads this vector function, which can change. Now, you've got to think of these things as being dynamic with different values of t, right? If I take the limit as t goes to 1 of r of t, then this guy is going to be, just plug it in, I get 1, 1 half, and sine 1. Whatever sine 1 is, right? We know it's, I don't know, somewhere in there. Somewhere between 0 and 1, right? Uh, true. So what that says is that this thing heads towards this function when t is 0, or excuse me, this vector when t is 0, and this vector when t is 1. And we can actually sketch these vectors, right? It's not very difficult. Now, isn't that fun? It's easy to work with. So what we're going to do now is we're going to think about these in terms of graphing them. And that can get a little tricky. We, ha we were um, introduced to graphing in three space before, in four space before, actually just three space with the planes. But now we're going to graph in four space with that parameter. And sometimes that can be a little bit tricky. But what if I were to do, let's just call r of t. I'm going to set this guy equal to, I don't know, let's go t 3 plus t and then t minus 1. Now, if you recall from chapter 12, or excuse me, from previous lessons in chapter 12, remember this guy occupies the x space, right? The horizontal. This guy the vertical, and then this guy's the thing that punches out of the border, punches into that third dimension. So I can just as easily write these as parameterized equations, right? I can say x equals t, y equals 3 plus t, and z equals t minus 1. You can you kind of understand why I yell at you guys to hook your t's to make them a little bit easier to deal with? I don't want to spoil the surprise here, but we're going to start graphing these. And we're actually going to use a really cool grapher that's free and it's online. And you guys are going to be able to use it a ton to be able to graph these. However, look at this. x, y, and z are all linear. So you're probably thinking, hey, this thing's probably a line. Not only that, but they're in the parameterized line form, right? And if you recall, remember, x is equal to x naught plus vt, right? And y, or excuse me, not vt, v is where we get those vectors from, excuse me, x naught plus at, y is equal to y naught plus bt, and z is equal to z naught plus CT. So just by looking at this, I know that this guy is 0 plus 1 times t. This guy is 3 plus 1 times t. And then this guy is negative 1 plus 1 times t. Now if you recall from the, la from the previous chapter, that tells me that what I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, is I have, I know that r naught, right, is going to come from the vector 0, 3, and negative 1. And the v, remember the parallel vector from which we got the, that original line that we started out with back in, in uh, uh, 4 space, comes from 1, comma 1, comma 1. Right on. So we wrap it around, all the way around. Now, I'm going to graph something. I'm going to show you the coolest graph first, and then we'll get into a little bit more mundane. 
what we're going to do is we're going to use computers predominantly to graph space curves because we're going to have to be able to visualize what curves look like, kind of like what we talked about in the last chapter. But I want to be able to utilize my computers to really get an idea because some of these things are just gnarly. So let's talk about space curves really quickly. A space curve is just a curve in space. That's all it is. There's nothing more fancy. And they're created with these parameterizations. All right. So what we end up with, I mean, and these things can be funky if this is X and this is Y and this is Z. Right? I mean, we could have something that coils, that just does something crazy through space, right? Woo! And it coils up and does something like that. And that, that's moving through space. Just like when we had parameters, we had some we had funky things that could be moving across the plane. They didn't necessarily have to behave like functions, which is really, really helpful since we know that things move through space in some erratic ways if we're trying to do some applications with this stuff. All right, so you ready? This is the fun part. I'm going to graph, just like I promised, ooh, let's put that away. I'm going to graph something called a toroidal spiral. Toroidal spiral and this is straight out of your book all right and it it's called a toroidal spiral because if you recall a torus is like a big donut right so here's my big donut and here's my inside i always screw these up how do i draw this yeah close enough right <laughs> i'm sorry so that my cross sections are circular right it's like i'm looking at a big donut now what a toroidal spiral does is it starts at some point and it proceeds to spiral around the torus, all right, through all three dimensions, four if you count T, all right? So that's kind of what it looks like, and then it'll come back to its starting place. So I have handily, very much like a cooking show, I have handily put the equation of a toroidal spiral here, and I started it at T equals zero, and finished it at t equals 1. So as you can tell, it's starting to spiral around. Now if you look at the equations, I mean, I, I don't know who comes up with these. I'm not smart enough to probably come up with these off the top of my head. I'd have to study for a little bit, but you can tell that they're sinusoidal. So they're going to behave themselves nicely. So if I look at this and I start playing with and I start playing with this max a little bit. I'm going to start it at 0, but I start playing with the max. Let's go to 5 and then graph it and see what happens. Oh, look at that. Now what's happening is it's starting at zero. If I plug zero into here, I get zero, and I get one. I get four plus zero is four times one. Y is zero and cosine is one. So I could actually plot those points. That's the starting point. It appears to be that point right here. And then over the course of five units, this thing starts carving this thing out. It kind of looks like we're about halfway done. Let's move it around a little bit, see where we're at. Look at that. I love this. This is pretty cool. Oh, by the way, this right here, math, uh, math.uri.edu is where I found this. It's a good one. If you can find a better one, find it. Let me know. Let's, let's make sure we get the best um, software that we possibly can. So let's see. How about 7.5? Let's go 7.5 and see what happens here. We'll graph that. Oh, yeah, that's looking beautiful. I wish I could grab it right off the screen. Remember how we did in uh, Wolfram Alpha? Yep, it appears as though we picked the whole thing up. Look at that. That's from the top. Kind of looks like uh, the spirographs, doesn't it? Now, if I move it over here, it's just really fun. You guys have got to play with this. Now, just like I promised, let's pull this guy up. Whoops. Let's pull this guy up. Go back a page. And then let's graph this, whoops, let's graph this and see if it gets what we need. Get away from there. Sorry, I'm being a little bit anally retentive right here. Let's put this guy in. So X, no, it's going to fight me in it. What did I say? Let me just see if I can look at it. All right, X is T, Y is 3 plus D, Z is T minus 1. So X is T, Y is 3 plus T. You got to be careful with notice the syntax. It's gotten me into trouble a couple times. Three plus t and y is what was that? Uh, t minus one, wasn't it? T minus one. All right, and let's just see what happens. Graph. There's our line, just like we thought. That's pretty cool, huh? That's not too bad. If I start it at zero one, like we like we're supposed to to really understand, um, well, to get a grasp for how long the, the direction and the behavior of the line. If you look, it looks like the same one. It's just that our our 
values changed. Okay? All right. We're going to have a lot of fun graphing those. You're going to be using this uh, piece of software yourself, or if you can find a better one, we'll use that as well. A lot of this class is going to be you guys digging around for some software packages that are awesome and free, and there will be lots and lots of uh, extra credit opportunities for you to be able to do that. So um, have fun with it. Well, we're going to have fun with it tomorrow in class. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.